Hey folks, Marcus here from the Ashton Fly Shop. Welcome back to another episode of Beginning Spay Tactics. We're going to talk a little bit about winter steelhead fly selection today and some of my thoughts on that topic. So let's get right into it. So with my steelhead flies, uh, my larger intruder stuff, I have a big old box of backstock. And then when I go onto the river, I have a small box that I carry with me at all times. And looking through this box is kind of like walking into a fly shop. Um, obviously a little bit less organized than your average fly shop, but still you get the point. There's a lot of variety from really bright colors, um, fluorescent colors to darker, more natural, bright blues, dark blacks, oranges, kind of the whole gamut of what we consider in our arsenal or color palette for winter steelhead fishing. And each time, you know, I hit the river, um, I have to find some way to take what's in here and get it into a smaller platform. And that's a lot like walking into a fly shop and seeing a big array of steelhead flies and needing to know what flies you need in a given situation. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna break down the elements that go into that choice and the things that I try to relate to customers. In the winter time, the first thing that I think about with steelhead fly selection is how far am I away from the ocean? Um, and the reason I think about that is when I'm close to the ocean relatively, say within 50 miles of the ocean, um, I'm a heck of a lot more likely to fish really bright pinks and oranges and whites and things in that color palette um, because I think that color palette is designed to be suggestive of a lot of what these fish are seeing in the ocean, encountering and eating in the ocean. And I'm more likely to target fish with them when I'm closer to the ocean. That's just a natural thing. It's a way I think about the river. And once I come into the upriver sections, the inland parts of these rivers, like we are, we're on the upper stretch of the Rogue River right now, I start to get more into blacks and blues, um, black and purple, blue and purple. And I, I don't think there's a clear line there. Um, you can obviously go to the coast and catch a fish on black and blue, and you can obviously come up here and catch a fish on pink. But in my experience, I have tended to find that these upriver fish are a little bit less grabby to the really vibrant bright color palette and those more subdued colors like black and blue tend to be more productive. So another thing with steelhead selection is the clarity of the river and that's going to impact your fly selection in two ways. Number one, it's going to affect the size but it's also probably going to have some effect on the color that you're choosing too. So when we get really clear water like we have out here today. Um, again, in clear water situations, I'm probably gonna be a little bit shy to the fluorescent stuff. Um, it just sticks out so vibrant in this really clear water that it feels almost too obtrusive to me. So I'm probably gonna stick just with, you know, black, black and orange, or even get into it's really worth having something that's olive or natural colored with you when the water clears up. And the other part of that is the size of the fly. Um, in clearer water, we can get away with a lot smaller presentations. Like in the winter time, I'll just pull something out here that I like to fish. Um, you know, on the upper river, in clear water, I'm, I'm usually fishing a fly that's just about this size. It's about three inches long for winter, winter steelhead. It's really easy to cast, still shows up well in the water. Um, and then as things color up and I want a fly that shows up more, I might have something that's, that's maybe an inch longer or an inch and a half longer. And that, that's just going to show up more in that more turbid water. You're going to be more visible, more present to the fish. So that's worth thinking about too. 
You know, there's an old adage of dark day, dark fly, bright day, bright fly. And I don't follow that um, exclusively, but I do think if you're out there swinging in the winter time and you get sunlight pokes through, it's good. Say you're fishing and you have a lot of confidence in black and blue or black and purple, but you're out there and the sun hits the water, it's a good idea to throw something a little brighter in the mix. It doesn't need to be the whole fly and it doesn't need to be super fluorescent, but maybe try purple and orange or purple and red or black and red, something that's just got a little bit of pop, a little bit of contrast, something that when that, when that light hits the water is just gonna light up um, the fluorescence in the fly. Like this one is kind of um, purple, pink, and blue. And I've had a lot of success on this color palette in the winter. A really big factor in your fly selection for winter steelhead is something that I feel like you just evolve to get a sense of, but in the beginning it's really hard to know um, and it's weight. And oftentimes when we get into winter steelhead fishing, we transition from fall from lighter flies and winter starts and we start throwing T14 and bigger, heavier flies. And the thing that you need to remember is that you still want the pattern to fish the water effectively. Um, so you don't want to have a presentation that's too heavy in any given circumstance. If you're tapping bottom as you swing through the run, it's just, it's just too heavy. So you want to be light enough to be above the fish, but kind of in the strike zone, which is going to be smaller in the winter um, compared to the fall when the water's a little bit warmer. Um, but my thoughts on weight are just, as I grow as a caster, I find myself gravitating towards the lightest offering that I can get away with and still feel like I'm in the game. Um, so in gravel bar situations, I tend to fish a lot of unweighted flies and let my tip get me down to the fish. When I'm fishing steeper gradient ledge rock stuff, I do tend to throw medium to heavyweight flies because I want that fly to drop down and get down to the fish level in those slots and stay down at that level for as long as possible. As you build a selection of steelhead flies, you'll want to cover all these bases. You'll want to have everything. Um, let me just find and pull out. You'll want to have everything from, you know, smaller, unweighted offerings that, you know, that's just a two inch fly that definitely has its day all the way up to, you know, larger unweighted stuff. Um, like this larger purple and pink fly all the way up to you know large weighted stuff and you want to have all of these options in front of you because especially if you're new to a piece of water um, you want to have the right stuff in your box not only to fish the water effectively but almost equally as important you need to have the stuff that you're excited to fish in a given piece of water um, you're in a boat on a new piece of water, you come up to a run, you wanna look down at your box and you wanna pull out a fly that you are excited to fish, that you think is good in the run that you have confidence in because as you'll often hear in steelhead fishing with flies, that confidence in what you're doing in the presentation and in the water is so important and it's, it's really hard to get that in the beginning because we spend so much time just trying to find fish and even as we progress in the sport, like this winter, I've landed one steelhead um, and spent a lot of time not landing steelhead. But over the years, you get that interaction from the fish and you can start to build out this color palette, size range, and weight that works for you. And I'd encourage you, instead of trying to stick to hard and fast rules about fly size, color, and all these things, Find flies that you like fishing. Find colors that you like fishing. Um, do so within the parameters of distance from the ocean, depth of the river, light conditions, but find stuff that you like fishing and get, it, get after it. 
So I didn't do a hard count of what I've got here in the box, but when I go fishing, I take my flies out of my back stock and I load up probably 20 flies in this little box here. And I'm trying to give myself coverage, um, whether I'm close to the ocean or far from the ocean, whether I'm fishing gravel bars or deeper slots or clear water or colored water. I wanna have a range of sizes and weights and colors of flies that give me confidence in any specific run. And I hope this little talk on winter steelhead fly selection will give you confidence in the next run you step into. Thank you very much for tuning in.